systemic investigation on the series of incidents involving Robert and John on the Metro. Clearly there's some um, series of behaviours or errors, if you like, from, from both the crew. So we've got Robert coming to work uh, with, with, with a level of fatigue and then he misses the, uh, the information on the NOTAMs, doesn't really get well prepared for the flights and the captain doesn't help out here, here either. There's, there's really no cooperation or coordination going on by the two crew. Come on, we've got to go. Like now? This is madness. We could have diverted around this. I thought you got the no tabs. I did. It's too friggin' late for that. Keep your eyes open. The decision-making processes of the crew need to focus on what's ahead of the aircraft and not what's historically occurred. What the hell is going on in your head? I'm sorry, I'm just... It's, it's just not good enough. This is your incident. You deal with it. He needs to be assertive, but certainly not moving into the aggressive area where put downs of the first officer will occur and potentially uh, result in the withdrawal of the first officer in a support role. Uh, it's, it's all about communication in the cockpit, it's all about understanding that uh, some days someone's going to be fitter for flight than others and, and the two working together as a team. Of course on the next flight then we see um, some further issues with Robert with uh, some fatigue again, some tension at home perhaps and also uh, some, a migraine and, and the onset of some flu symptoms. Splitting headache. And a cold. I mean, where are the pills? Um, it's not covered. Uh, the strong ones? self medication's a bad thing. You, you need to be talking to an appropriately aviation medicine qualified doctor. Another recipe for disaster is mixing your medications. And a lot of medications cross-react and lead to some pretty adverse effects. If someone's got a bad cold, they're more likely to have blocked uh, eustachian tubes, so they may have ear trouble with flying. Potentially their sinuses might have trouble when they're flying. And also there's distraction of pain and just feeling under the weather, generally fatigued. Certain people get unique reactions to medication. Medications can interact with fatigue and they can cause a synergistic uh, decrement in performance. His state of health, the headache, the self-medication, um, the first obvious sign was probably the incident with driving to the aircraft, that he probably was not in a uh, good state. If you're getting fatigued, you've got a lot of pressure typically that's going to drive you down the path of, of trying to pay off loans, of making sufficient money and getting hours up. You're probably not the best person to make a decision about when you're starting to push yourself a little bit too hard. It's also important that the, the captain has a very clear understanding that they hold the ultimate responsibility for the safety and the conduct of the flight. Clearly in this scene, the captain had uh, literally delegated that task with no oversight to the first officer. Look at it as a uh, learning experience. The authority grading on this flight is too steep. You've got a, a captain that's not overly supportive, uh, that's showing signs of being somewhat autocratic in, in the fact that uh, not understanding what the limitations are of the uh, first officer in this case, not really being that aware of the fatigue issues and everything and the threats that have led up to prior to getting into the aircraft, and the fact that under those conditions the captain's actually gone to sleep to leave a first officer that, that's not in prime sort of uh, position to be performing those duties is, uh, is inappropriate. Being distracted can have a significant impact on your situational awareness. A distraction like a warning light or a minor technical problem leads you to researching a quick reference handbook emergency checklist. Bottom line is fly the aeroplane. If you get distracted, um, you can lose control of the aircraft before you've even realised it. We've got weather as another threat that's going to increase complexity of this particular task. We've got the relationship with the captain. So we know from the uh, previous flight that uh, there's already potentially some tension that if it hasn't been dealt with appropriately, pre-exists before they even get into that aircraft type. In this situation, it's fairly clear that the FO should not have been going flying that day. You bloody idiot, you're gonna get us killed. What do you wanna do? What should have been happening there was some good CRM. The captain should have picked up that this guy's not 100% fit for flight. He may have to pick up a bit of the slack and, uh, and help him out. One of the first incidents involving Wilco, he gets distracted during his pre-flight 
and misses the pedo tube cover. The guy was obviously distracted because he was running late. His, his mind was probably still on what he'd just been doing rather than what he was there to do. Uh, it's all about just having plenty of time up your sleeve to prepare for your flight, to have your mind in the, in the correct frame of mind for the job that you're about to do. All of this will mean there's less chance of being distracted. Anyone that's got secondary employment should be reporting that and, and people should be looking to keep track of just how much work they are doing. Take it down again, mate. Yeah, mate. Usual? For sure. Most charter pilots are in an environment where they'll spend overnights in country towns. Often the passengers that have been with them, they may not be aware of it, but end up in the hotel they're at or the, the restaurant. And they're under the spotlight whether they know it or not. Depending on how much alcohol you've, you've imbibed, uh, it could be many, many hours before it's out of your system. So you drink while you're flying? No, no, no. It's uh, got to have like an eight-hour turnaround between the bottle and, uh, and your throttle. <laughs> Wasn't that uh, ten hours? Wilco appeared to have a pretty sound plan up front with a ten-hour bottle to throttle, but after a couple of drinks that seemed to change to an eight-hour bottle to throttle rule, and after that we saw that his judgement got even worse. Yeah. <laughs> Really, Wilco was suffering from a, essentially a double whammy, both the effects of alcohol, but also the effects of a reduced sleep and also reduced sleep quality. In our environment, you've got to be professional and you've got to have a certain level of discipline. It's the best view from here. Bet you get all the girls up here. Being distracted can have a significant impact on your situational awareness. Uh, Zulu Tango uniform, 9,000. In this example, he loses situational awareness, invites a passenger to come up the front, is distracted by that uh, individual, and the result of that is a altitude excursion and the associated reports and a potential separation breakdown. If he hadn't have been there chatting with the girl in the right hand seat, he probably wouldn't have busted that altitude if he'd have just been doing his job. Passengers, 10 o'clock. Mate, we've got to get going. All right, let's get on. Uh, nothing worse, the, the, the passengers turn up early, you're not ready. The best thing you can do, sorry guys, just if you could just wait in the terminal while I get the plane ready. Stuff this up. He should have had, that, uh, had the book out, known that that was going to be a bit of a short strip. The hot straight in approach but wasn't the best plan of attack. He should have been doing, doing the circuit, had a good look at it particularly if he's never been there before, analyse it, bring someone else that, he, that uh, out there that's operated into that strip before, is there anything I've got to watch out for here? Just a bit of pre-flight pre preparation. Was some other damage done? Was there, a, was there some cracking or bending that's going to affect that aeroplane and, and cause some, some greater amount of grief uh, later down the line? I want both your written responses on my desk by tomorrow morning. Get your heads together and work it out. The problems with the uh, with the metro guys, no mechanical problem obviously, but imperative to report because it, through the counselling they were able to see where the shortcomings were on both sides of the cockpit. Next time, hopefully, that won't happen. It quite often becomes apparent very quickly during an audit whether there is a, a culture within the company of reporting. If crew feel reticent to report any incidents occurred, there is a confidential system. <sighs> is that an incident report? <sighs> Flight from hell. Yeah, had one yesterday myself. Weather changed and I misjudged the approach. End up bogged in the mud. If there's ever any doubt as to whether or not you should report uh, a situation, that should be the, the alarm bell to say, yes, I will report it. It doesn't matter how small an incident or how big an incident, it needs to be reported. Oh, what did Barry say? I haven't told him yet. It's not bright, mate. Yeah, I know, but that's where I'm going now, though, so. Reporting is about gathering intelligence, and, and, and that intelligence leads to uh, better safety outcomes for all organisations. Don't be afraid to report. We want to see your reports. After all, reports is information. It's good safety information that the organisation wants to learn from. Yeah, boss, I was just uh, coming to see you about that. Actually. Yeah, come and sit down. So what will we hope that the Chief Pilot will talk to Wilco about? Firstly, I think remind Wilco about his responsibilities. Things like secondary employment, fatigue, managing sterile cockpits, all those sorts of issues. Because perhaps Wilco probably shouldn't have operated aircraft back 
uh, from the incident involving uh, the landing gear. But also the Chief Pilot needs to ask perhaps where has the organisation failed WorkHo? Are those policies clear enough? Is the organisation getting the right information, the right safety information without fear or favour? These are, are really the key attributes of good, safe organisations, error-tolerant organisations.